This algorithm provides us with a lower bound for the traveling salesman problem. What that means is that at the end of the algorithm, we'll have a value that we will know we cannot get lower than for any solution for the traveling salesman problem. We are trying to visit every vertex once and finish at the same point that we started at. The way that we do this is we construct a graph with one of the vertices missing, as per this diagram, I've chosen to start with A, and then we construct the residual minimum spanning tree for the remaining graph. We will need to do this for each of the vertices being missing, but I'm going to show you the process with one here and then provide the results for the others. So on this graph, the minimum spanning tree looks like that. This is the minimum total weight for a spanning tree for all of the vertices on our original graph, not including A. We need to know the total weight for this residual minimum spanning tree, and it's 38. In order to get a total value, we need to add A back in, along with the two shortest distinct arcs, in order to have our total value. For A, we're going to add the 4 and 9 in. This gives us a total weight of 51 for this graph. We need to do the same process for each of the vertices being missing. To save time in this video, I'm going to simply present the results though. If we don't have B, our residual minimum spanning tree has 39, and we would need to add in a 4 and an 8, which are the two lowest weights going into B. That gives us a total of 51 as well. For no C, we have a total of 62. For no D, a total of 48. No E, a total of 64. No F, a total of 56. No G, a total of 60. And no H, a total of 48. Now in practice, it takes quite a while to find all of those values. In an exam question, they're likely to ask you to do one or two of them. We then look for the total that is largest. Remember we're looking for a lower bound, and what the algorithm is telling us is that each of these values we know that we can't beat. So for example with no A, we know that we can't beat 51, but looking at C, we know that we also can't beat 62, so it makes sense to take the highest value. In this case, our highest value is if we don't have E, that's a total of 64. We know now that we cannot beat 64. This is our lower bound. It may not be possible to find a solution for the travelling salesman problem at 64, but we know that we definitely can't beat it. The diagram for showing that particular residual minimum spanning tree and edges added back in, along with the other edges of the graph, looks like this. We can see from that that we do have a cycle in there going from B, C, E, H and G, but that we have F, D and A coming off that. It is possible that we can beat this, we don't yet know. For this particular graph, we now have a lower bound of 64 and an upper bound of 71. This upper bound of 71 was calculated in another video and I will add a link to that particular video in the description below. So given that we have a lower bound of 64 and an upper bound of 71, what does that mean? Well, very simply, for the travelling salesman problem, we know that we can't do lower than 64, and we know that we don't need to do higher than 71. The solution may be 64 or 71 or somewhere in between. These algorithms don't tell you what the absolute optimal solution is, but it does give bounds for that solution. What you want to do, of course, is bring the upper bound down as much as possible, get the lower bound up as high as possible, and then you can squeeze the optimal solution into a smaller possible range. But that's it for this algorithm. Good luck when using it. Be very careful when finding the residual minimum spanning trees for each of those vertices not being there. My advice would be, if possible, to redraw the graph or have some way in your own notes to show which ones you are paying attention to and which ones you are not. Good luck when working through this one. There are quite a few places to make simple mistakes, so just take it very carefully.